so in 2006, he gets invited to do an Abhijanya like program in Atlanta. So it's April two to four. One day is $130, three days, $360. There's about a thousand people in attendance. Uh, that is a gross of around $400,000 for the three days. And we'll see that this leads to the first visit to the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, New York in 2007. And Derek, you've done a little backgrounder on the Omega Institute. Uh, so what can you tell us? Yes, it's in a beautiful area of New York that I spent a fair amount of time in in my dozen years living in New York City. But the Omega Institute for Holistic Studies was founded in 1977 by Elizabeth Lesser and Stefan Rekshafin. Um, Stefan is someone who I shared a number of meetings and meals with uh, back in the early aughts, and I, I really enjoyed him. It was shortly before he was going to um, open a center in Costa Rica as he was transitioning out of Omega. But the property now sits on a 190-acre plot of land in Rhinebeck, as Matthew mentioned, on a pond a few miles from the Hudson River. And this is about two hours north of New York City. Their founding message was, quote, to provide hope and healing for individuals and society through innovative educational experiences that awaken the best in the human spirit, end quote. Uh, so most listeners are probably aware of the Esalen Institute in Big Sur or Kripalu in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Uh, Omega has housed numerous spiritual figures, many who have appeared at Big Sur and Kripalu. Um, so among the guest lists that have pe presenters is Ram Das, Allen Ginsberg, Thich Nhat Hanh, Eckhart Tolle, and you know, a few figures you've heard on this podcast. Uh, you got Pema Chodron, uh, um, Aja Shanti, you got Deepak Chopra, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and um, of course, the subject of this episode, John of God. Uh, so there, I mean, honestly, there have been thousands of presenters at Omega, which, and their website, they claim to house 23,000 people every year and reach 2 million in their online efforts and retreats. And you know, I'm glad that you talked a little bit about the talent that circles through Omega Institute, because what stood out most to me in my many visits uh, is that it's incredibly eclectic. I was there to work on a social justice and yoga project, uh, but you know, there's always several groups and residents at the same time. So while my group is brainstorming policy about creating yoga spaces, like free from sexual assault. Uh, there was another group that was practicing astral travel. Uh, there was another group that was doing like an extended juice fast. Like it really takes all types. It's like, you know, global village type place. And, you know, I would say though, that as I think about it, 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 it feels like this mix of subjects and epistemologies, sort of attitudes towards the world and knowledge is kind of a, it's a, it's a key, I don't know, part of the story of how John of God ends up being validated in this world. Um, it, it seems that the counterculture workshop and retreat industry in the global north throws a lot of different things together according to market demand. And I think this tends to create a mutual validation network for things that just don't go together. Um, you know, and the last time I was there, this was October of uh, 2018. So it was just a couple of months before the news dropped on John of God. I took this video with my camera of the presenter's lunchroom, which I got, I wasn't a presenter, but, but we, we had access to it for our, for our working group. And on the walls, there are portraits of past presenters and there's John of God's mug, uh, right there beside a portrait of Gloria Steinem. Uh, Tony Morrison, Pema Chodron, Maya Angelou, wow. Al Gore, <laughs> Woody Guthrie. Um, and so, uh, you, you know, I, I imagine as I'm researching this episode, the earnest and impressionable person uh, in their 20s or so uh, who in 2007 or 2014 or 2017 would have heard of John of God coming to Omega Institute and then, you know, did a little bit of Googling to figure out what Omega was all about and then maybe bought their ticket in part because they were fans of Maya Angelou. 
I mean, the thing that I'm that I'm reflecting on now as I hear you talking as well is is that this is not that different from the gurus who would be hosted at these different uh, retreat centers in in previous times, but it, it strikes me just freshly as how just how grotesque all of this is when the audience that is being drawn in are people who who have really bad illnesses that this is the, the the promise like what you're paying for is to come and see this world renowned healer because because it may be the last chance you have to recover from cancer and there's nothing there it's just so it's hard for me to make sense of how an organization like omega would go yeah that that seems like a great idea well that's why i wanted to stop i wanted to talk to skip bacchus uh, who's the current ceo and and he was kind enough to give me uh a good amount of time for an interview. But about John of God, Bacchus said that, uh, I, I asked, you know, so how did he end up coming to Omega in 2007? And uh, Skip said that he was first recommended by a, a staffer, a friend of Omega Institute who had been to the Atlanta event the previous year. And Skip was uh, sufficiently impressed that he booked a trip for Abhijanya soon after. And while he was there, he met Heather Cummings, whose uh, hagiography of John of God would be published within that same year. Uh, it looks like Cummings, who um, I think is, uh, his, her family is English, but she was born and raised in Brazil, actually. Uh, she did more to promote John of God in English as his translator and booking agent than any other person. Uh, she didn't respond to my Facebook message request for an interview. I sent an, uh, a, a, uh, an email as well. Um, also, there's an interesting note about uh, Heather Cummings that her website at this point advertises her connection to the beings of light that she first met at La Casa, but John of God's name is nowhere to be found on her website. There's no mention of her book about him. Uh, she was his right-hand rep for almost two decades. So... Um, Skip described uh, visiting Abhijanya and being very taken by what a different place it was and how rural it was, how it felt like a, another time and place. He, he said that it was you know, right on the edge of the rainforest, that people were still riding horses into town and, and tying them up at bars and grocery stores. Uh, and he was a lifelong meditator as well. And so, you know, because... At La Casa, one of the main things that you do during the event days is you sit and, and meditate with closed eyes while the procedures are going on. Uh, that suited him very well. And he also said that he was a cancer patient. patient and so there was something very um, uh, charged about this experience and personally meaningful. But he stayed with Heather Cummings, um, the booking agent, while he was there. And he described getting into the logistical questions with her about a potential visit to uh, Rhinebeck early on, like how many visitors could Omega accommodate and so on. And I asked if he felt like he was being pitched in some sort of business sense. And he said, no, not really, because uh, John at that point was traveling to Australia, to Europe. He, he didn't need more hosts. So for him, it was much more about the experience. Uh, he said that uh, he was extremely impressed by the rituals. Uh, he was within two feet of one of the surgeries at one point, and there was no way that he could explain uh, what was going on. So he said at that time, he was moderately aware of the spiritism context in Brazil. Uh, he said, however, that uh, it wasn't really about the history, uh, that he was really looking to see whether or not this event would be right for Omega. This was very much specifically to what is it that this person is doing? Is it a potentially of value from a healing perspective? Um, and because that's where it had to fit into Omega's mission, that it had something you know that was connected to spirit and to wellness and healing. And did it represent what looked like a value to try it out. 